Good afternoon, Jackie. Tell us about your journey and what led you to writing your book and how did you get into training in the early years? Well, I had too many... A uh, good afternoon. Um, I had too many school changes between the ages of 10 and 12 and this led me to somewhat underperforming in school. So then I went on to establish myself in banking and was always involved in voluntary work with children. So for example, working in the summer holiday club and working in school and helping out with beavers, cubs and scouts. I went on back to study in my 30s and completed a psychology degree with a focus on child development. This allowed me to join the British Psychological Society and fueled my ongoing interest in educational research. I went on to complete my general primary teacher training and due to my interest in all my, you know, into children's development, I chose to complete my teacher training at a school centre, initial teacher training centre. It was based at a residential school for children with emotional and behavioural disorders. The trainee placements were in both mainstream and special needs schools. And although I am primary trained, I chose to specialise in the early years, nursery, reception, and year one and two. Classroom observations and assessments and being the school literacy lead led me to my ongoing interest in educational research, led me to produce various resources to meet the different needs of the children I taught. And then I went on in turn to study for a master's in psychology to further develop my understanding of both typical and atypical child development. My research project was, my final research project for my masters, was based on comprehension skills in the year three class. The findings showed that children reaching year three without age appropriate vocabulary skills struggled to access reading and reading skills, and so they struggled to build their on to their comprehension skills. I wanted to investigate these findings within the early years setting, but my teaching commitments, which were plenty, did not allow me to immediately follow up on this research. I did, however, start to research, collect data and consider the implications of starting school without age appropriate language skills. This was a long and somewhat winding path to Wiz's words. Okay, so you mentioned plugging the early language, language skills gap. What do you mean by that? Well, plugging the early language skills gap refers to my findings as a primary school teacher and a researcher that a, a deleterious gap exists between children's school entry language skills. And this is specifically in terms of levels of oral vocabulary that children enter school with. This matters because children starting school without an age appropriate oral vocabulary rarely catch up with their peers. Some children may be born with or develop specific needs and need additional support. However, generally and to promote best life outcomes for all children, especially given the effects of the pandemic, it is necessary to find ways to plug this early language development anomaly. Data from my... Oops data from my literary review highlights this for example. A 2016 joint inquiry of the Foundation using the UK Government's Life Chances Strategy, reported by the Communication Trust, a group of 50 non-profit organisations, reported that at the age of six there was a gap of a few months between the reading age of, of children who had good oral language skills at five and those with poor oral, oral language skills at five. By the time they're 14 this gap is widened to five years difference in reading age. Referring to the same report, Laura et al. reported that a child with normal non-verbal but good poor oral vocabulary at five was one and a half times more likely to be a poor reader, to have mental health problems and to be more than twice as likely to be unemployed at age 32. So what are the side effects of not singing, reading, talking and developing a child's language skills? The side effects of not talking, singing, reading and developing a child's language skills are manifold. For example, nursery rhymes are known to promote development across the communication, physical, social and emotional and cognitive domains of development. For example, see the work of Yan Wen C from 2016. It's useful here to make, to make a quote to some work from our esteemed children's author Michael Rosen. It comes from the Every Child a Talk program which came out of governmental research recommendations in 2008 and Michael Rosen quotes at the same time it's 
it, no one can be missed out. All this is crucial for how young children develop their powers of thinking and understanding. And at the same time, it's how they get to feel good about themselves. So it underpins later reading, writing, talking. If children are not sung to, read to, talked to, and do not have support to develop their language skills, the side effects are pervasive. Communication, physical development, social and emotional development, and cognition all depend on successful child and language development. Has the pandemic exacerbated the problem? Well, yes, it has. The, the pandemic has impacted on children's language development due to the needs for homeworking and homeschooling. Although, as my literature review shows, and ongoing research shows, it, they both indicate that the number of children continuing to enter school without school, reading or reading readiness has not improved over and beyond the last decade. I volunteer to do rhyme time every Friday in my local library. Is that the sort of environment to help parents who are feeling a little uncertain or lacking in confidence? Uh, yes, wrong time is an ideal time to bring parents together and to help to build their confidence and understanding of their role in their children's early oral language development. However, and as my literature view and blog indicate, many parents do not use the library service and are not reading regularly with their children. My research indicated that many parents lack confidence and assume that school will provide their child with all the learning tools that they will need. However, by the age of three, a child's brain is about 80% of an adult's and by five is 90% of an adult's. The preschool and toddler years and parent as first teacher are all important, important for successful development. Parents have an important role to play in their child's language and brain development and we need to support them in this. There is clearly more to be done to encourage and support more parents to become involved in their child's language development. Why is language development so important? Well, as discussed earlier, with respect to the impact of sharing learning nursery rhymes, which of course will extend to sharing early picture and storybooks, language development is important as it underpins the development of the communication, the physical, the social and the emotional, and the cognitive domains of development. So tell us about your book. Who is it for? Is it suitable for parents and all types of early years provider? Childminders, nurseries and preschools? Yes, Wizard's Words is a book of 70 illustrated modern nursery rhymes for parents and all early years educate, uh, providers to share with their under fives and prefer preferably before starting school. Many of the rhymes are linked to topic areas and the, image has been kept, the images have been carefully matched for using as talking points and developing comprehension and questioning as children progress with their language skills. A paperback, audiobook and ebook is available. The audiobook is narrated and unabridged to include presentation of the key oral vocabulary and to ensure the clear presentation of the words in the first instance. The mantra, hear it, say it, sing it, move it, will ensure that the rhyme and rhythm that leads to optimum brain and language development is achieved. An insightful review can be found on the Matador site. It's by Sarah Neville, owner of Nuts for Childminding, um, and is an officer to register childminder. And in her words, it is suitable for parents and all types of early years provider, childminders, nurseries and preschools and for all children whether they are learning English as a first, second or additional language. Wizzy's Words links wonderfully to the new Early Years Foundation stage curriculum in England and will help you to meet Ofsted's inspection expectation of building children's vocabulary through books, songs, rhymes, stories and conversation. Oh, so tell us all about what you cover in your book. I know that it is a fun rhyming book for sharing with children from 0 to 5 and beyond, and a book with an emphasis on the sharing of oral spoken language from birth, and a book for developing reading readiness. In my book, I cover the oral language that is known to underpin successful learning if acquired before school entry. It's taken from the language development study, and this is, contains universally validated data about language development and was put forward by a scholar. 
My research, my research indicated that rhyme was a key vehicle for developing early oral language. However, examination of spoken and written word frequencies showed that traditional nursery rhymes did not contain the oral vocabulary for educational success. An, an introduction, guide and steps is covered at the front of the book. At the back, you can find the complete list of words presented in Wizzy's words. Each left-hand page has a rhyme with pictures. This page will be the initial focus for early language learning. The facing page contains the focus oral words for the rhyme and will be useful as a child progresses towards reading. The rhymes at the front of the book are generally simpler and contain the oral vocabulary that a two-year-old would normally develop. However, to ensure that children's progress, children progress at their own speed, the, pres the presentation is not prescriptive. Language develop development is not a race. Little and often and choosing favourite rhymes will often be the best way forward. The e-book provides a screen alternative and the audiobook provides a narrated version of the book for those that may find these helpful. What is reading readiness? I'm glad that you asked me that question. I'm planning to cover that in a future blog. Reading readiness is as, it's, as, is as it sounds. Preparing for reading. With respect to Wizzy's words, reading readiness can be seen as ensuring that children are given opportunities to hear, say, sing, move and engage in the to and throw, turn taking nature of everyday language, rhymes and stories. Reading with a child, singing with a child, turn taking language with a child, a child choosing a favourite rhyme or story all contribute to reading readiness. Reading readiness has two parts, being ready to read and becoming a fluent reader. These stages will differ for different children. Reading readiness is important. Early exposure to reading, the pre-reading stage, is highly correlated with the child's later reading ability, emerging literacy level and therefore lifelong education and opportunities. So tell us about what you cover in your blog. The blog is a place, or my blog is a place, where parents can find out more about Wizzy's words and how to use it. It is also a place for parents to go to find out about more about current education issues that relate to early language development and tips for helping their child. My current blog includes how to support your child's early learning, what is Wizzy's Words Language Development Resource? How to use Wizzy's Words to support early language learning? A relationship, ability group in behaviour, early language. A baby talk, the key to speech and language development. Julia Donaldson, language and reading, parents' literary choices. Learning to read, reading and the role of phonics. How to share books with your children, dialogic reading. And I am planning to add the Reading Readiness blog to the blog shortly. So tell us about your videos. The videos have all been added to try to guide the use of Wizzy's Words. The earlier videos for Wizzy's Words provide parents and educators with an introduction and an overview to the book, ebook and audiobook, together with samples of the rhymes, and ways to deliver them in a creative way. You wouldn't really want to be hearing somebody telling a story in a, in a gruff voice unless you were trying to be a bear. You wouldn't want to be talking in a voice like this all the time. You want to think about how to use the voice. The later videos following the Wizzy's words ethos of hear it, say it, sing it, move it. Show models for both indoor and outdoor sharing of the rhymes and how both fine and gross motor skills can be developed alongside language development by adding actions to the rhymes. Presented alongside the videos are two audiograms giving sample rhymes from the audiobook with the corresponding word sets. Here the emphasis is on spoken language and the audiobook is narrated as already stated for clarity. Audiobook 2 is accompanied by video, the nursery rhymes for the 21st century, and it shows the progression from hearing words to saying words to singing words to moving to the words. So following the stages of brain and language development. 
To find out more about Wizards Words, go to Sue Atkins Book Club here. You can go to Wizards Words website where you find free sample rhymes, audiograms of the audiobook, videos, reviews, and frequently asked questions. You can also find Wizards Words on Amazon, Goodreads, and Matador. And for educators and for teachers and educators interested in your research, where can they find out more? For teachers and educators that would like to have a copy, a full copy of my literary review and follow up my research, they can contact me via the website or they can email me wizzeswords at gmail.com and I'll be very happy to hear from people and you know if they have any questions please feel free to ask away, that would be good. How do people find you? Tell us, tell us your website and social media platforms. The website is wizzeswords.co.uk and if you look for Wizzes Words, Wizzes Words is on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest. They can all be found there and they will provide resources that will help you to go forwards with Wizzes Words.